the local level in the borough right here. That's exactly what's happening here in the same thing. Yeah. It, it's that they, it, why do you think our taxes keep going up every single year? Because they keep spending more oh, and more. And, and, and more. they keep on adding more and more people to their, t- to their roles, to their employee roles, people who have to get paid, you know? Yeah. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning. This is Al. Hey, good morning, Al. Hey, Al. Uh, I got a couple things. I'll try. You guys brought up a lot of stuff. But one, I participate in the guiding industry in this state. And as one of the regulations that pertain to being a guide is if I believe an illegal act is taking place in the field, I must report it. Nice. And if I don't, and I find, and they find out that I was, I seen it, and I didn't report it, I could be punished through, you know, through citations and fines. Second thing is, and you hit on there a little bit, and uh, why is the oil the only thing being taxed? Again, why, why not the guiding industry? Why not the fishing industry? Why not the mining industry? They're all natural resources. They're all property of, so said the state. Let's do it. Well, you know, if you look at the who's actually the biggest employer uh, right here in the Fairbanks borough, 59% of all people work at one level or another for government. Maybe we ought to tax government. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's a valid point. And, I mean, also mine's a valid point. Is, it is. Know, the reason they're taxing the oil is because, it, they, you know, they say it belongs to the state, but... So does all our other natural resources, but they don't have the same royalties or prorated royalties on anything they do. <laughs> oil, companies are, operation. Yeah. oil companies are e- easy to make out as the evil corporations and e- get the people to follow well, yeah, them. Al, Al, are you a, are you a reader? Do you read no, books? No, I don't read at all. Okay, well, that's, that's probably best for you. Uh, but I, I, I was going to read your game regulations. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read those. <laughs> all, all, he, all he has to do is just wait. The troopers will explain it to him when he does something wrong. Yeah. Uh, Al, but the, my, my point is this, is if you look at the history even here of this state, you're, it's kind of hard to find a lot of it. But if you look at it, you, you're going to find that all those other industries that you mentioned, fishing, guiding, fur trapping, basically... We have been sufficiently colonized in those areas over over the last century, two centuries here in Alaska, going back to the times of the Russians, in which basically all of our resources were being raped and taken away from the people that lived here anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay? You look at the coming of oil, we had an opportunity with that to set up something where the state mechanism, this government, this non-entity could get rich without raping the people anymore. So I, I think it's it's one of those interesting little things to look at that we are still a colony. Yeah. We are still having all of our resources sucked out. If if we were to turn it around and make it so that people, individuals like yourself, or individual gold miners, or individual uh, people with oil drilling platforms, could go out and get the resources and keep it here in the state and actually produce something here, we would be rich beyond our wildest dreams. And instead, we are settling for a pittance and slavery. I, I totally agree with you. But why doesn't the why doesn't the oil company now go to court and say, "Well, you're discriminating or just against us. We're taking this one natural resource. What about the rest of them?" Well, because because their contract. I mean, they did agree to that when they came up here. Yeah. And th- and that's because everybody you know around the world. Uh, everybody yeah, but what about their new contract? Right. Well, that's that's what's causing them to leave. leave. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but that ultimately, that's what will happen. You know, again, people will get what they ask for, you know, whether they uh, understand what they're asking for or not. Sounds good. All right, Al. Thanks so much for the call. Appreciate talking we to you. We got to figure out f- statewide and locally. We either are gonna have to stop government spending, not just slow it down. It needs to stop like er, no more. I mean, they can't even handle spending at their current level. They have to have more and more and more. That's the nature of the state is more and more and more. They have to quit spending all of our money, quit taking from us, and they need to drop regulations dramatically or... No one's going to have work. Well, you know, no one's going to have again, a job. I Whether you're to, in a union, you're I not going to have a job. Up, Non-union, you're not going to have a job. No one will have work if we don't. If anybody start. out there reads, you might want to read a book called Atlas Shrugged. Because you are seeing it happen right now. In fact, there is, and I, and I kid you not, there is right now, there is a, uh, a very rich developer who is building floating cities. 
Yeah, 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 the seasteading project. Exactly. Yeah. And, and he's attracting um, thousands of really rich people who are sick and tired of having all their money taken from them. Yeah, there's also some... That are leaving and renouncing their citizenship of different uh, countries and, and moving to these floating cities in uh, international waters. There's some developments in South America that are, that are similar. They're attracting people from all over the world who are just sick of it. Which is exactly what happened in Atlas Shrugged, basically. Yeah. All, all the people, all the creative people, all the people who made wealth, they just basically said, fine, you're going to take everything, you can have it. Walk away from it. It's not going to take long for it all to come crashing down. 458 Talk is the number. People. <laughs> Good morning. Obviously not Patriots. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning, uh, Frank Turner here. Good morning, Frank. Frank. I just want to remind you, next Saturday, falls on the 3rd, I believe Patriot Lament will be on. I will have a proclamation or a resolution from Mayor Jerry Cleaworth and hopefully uh, the signature of John Cargill recognizing the true role of the jury to judge the law as well as the facts. And, uh, of course, jury race day is September 5th. I'll have enough brochures to hand out. And, you know, it's amazing. I question legislatures and judges why Oregon, Maryland, Georgia, and Indiana, plus 20 other states under preamble of free speech recognize the jury's role in jury nullification. Couldn't the uh, governor, Frank... <laughs> Make a proclamation. Oh, yeah. I, I knew that. Let's, I'm being really <laughs> pathetically hypothetical here. Hi, Sean. <laughs> Couldn't the governor make a proclamation that would require the judges before each jury panel, before they commence in their trials, for oh. the judge to say, you are not only responsible for judging the facts, but you have the right and know the duty to judge the law as I bring it forward to you now. Exactly, but not under Sean uh, Parnell's watch. Not on, He's catering to those uh, government lawyers. That's uh, why I was saying I'm being pathetically hypothetical. But right. He could do that, correct? Exactly. And he what would be it. what would be the danger? Why Why are these legislators, why is the governor... They have to know that it's there. Most of them are lawyers. Surely they learned something about it. Surely they studied history enough to know what John Adams said about the right and duty of the jury to judge the law. What are they afraid of, Frank? Well, I don't think they could care less. Lots of revenue! <laughs> anyway, Sorry, that was a, me. That was you'll me. have a chance to read that on next Saturday, the proclamation from Jerry Cleaver. Thanks, we'll do it. Frank. Appreciate Thank it. You. All right, 458 Talk, the number. We are rapidly running out of time. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Patriots Lament. Morning. Hey, who is this? Trevor Stay. Good morning, I, Trevor. I was calling. I was reading a book here. Uh, what? By J- yeah, I know. Oh, Rocking thing, educating that's suspicious. Ourselves. We need to report this guy. What was your address, <laughs> social security number, and driver's license number? Uh, they probably have that already. I'm on a cell phone. Uh, all right, go ahead, uh, Trevor. All right, the book by James Wesley Rawls called Patriots. And uh, in here it. they talk about something called a loidial title. I was wondering if I, any of you guys knew what that was or if it's applied to the borough up here. Uh, yeah, it's not part. I mean, part of the state constitution basically prevents anybody in Alaska from having a loyal title. It so we're all, we're all fee simple. I mean, the majority of Americans are, have fee simple title, which means we're all renters. All right, real quick, gentlemen, point of action. What's the one thing you want people to take away from today's show? What should they do this week? Read something good. Yeah, read the blog. PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. We'll put some new content up. All right. And don't turn your neighbor in. And call your legislator. Tell them to quit spending all the money. I said one thing. You've got like five things there. Come on. Sound like a terrorist, Josh. All right. There you go. Uh, Don't turn your neighbor in. That's the message for today. Read something. Be dangerous. Patriots the Mench, brought to you each and every Saturday by Bitcoin Enterprises and by Far North Tactical and by the Campaign for Liberty. Check them out for yourself. Don't believe us. Do the research. Read for yourself. We'll see you next time right here on KFAR. Up next, it's Health Talk on the local talk radio, KFAR.